In today's video, we'll answer questions like, who is the devil? What does he look like? And what is his purpose? So if you're ready, then let's go. Good morning! Good morning and welcome back to Morning Meds where we meditate on God's word in order to tackle everyday issues that we face as Christians. And if you like what you see on Morning Meds, don't forget to like, subscribe, as well as share with a friend so we can make it through this life together with the help of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you, God, for its truth and its power. We ask you, God, to forgive us for the wrong that we've done, said, and thought. We ask you to allow your word to open up so that we can see our true enemy for who he is so that we can knock him off at the pass. We love you, God. We need your strength. We cannot make it without you. And we know that your word says that in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. So, Heavenly Father, lift us up and keep us, Lord God, in your name and in, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> The devil is the devil. The devil, also referred to as Satan, is best known as the personification of evil and the nemesis of good people everywhere. His image and story have evolved over the years and the devil has been called many different names in various cultures. Beelzebub, Lucifer, Satan, and Mephistopheles, to name a few, with various physical descriptions including horns and hooved feet. But this malevolent being and his legion of demons continue to strike fear in the people from all walks of life as the antithesis of all things good. We all seen the red guy with the horns and the pitchfork and the pointy tail, but that is not the devil. That is a picture. We probably couldn't fathom what he looks like in real time, but we do know that he's a shapeshifter and that he can take other forms. We see this in Luke 22 and 3, when Satan enters Judas, we also see it in Mark chapter 5 and 2 when uh, the man was possessed with the unclean spirit. And lastly, we see it in Acts chapter 16 verses 16 through 18 when the woman who was possessed with the spirit of divination or telling the future. The enemy comes in all shapes and sizes, so never be misled by the picture. So what is the enemy's purpose? In the word of God, we see the enemy as the tempter, a deceiver and an accuser. We see him as a tempter in Genesis chapter three when the serpent tempts Adam and Eve or mankind to be like God, knowing good and evil. We also see him being sneaky in Matthew chapter four, verses one through 11, when he tempts Jesus three times in the wilderness. We also see the enemy as a deceiver. In 2 Corinthians 11 and 14, it tells us that he will disguise himself as an angel or messenger of light, all the while spreading false gospel and twisting scripture to make it a lie. Another way we see the enemy in scripture is as an accuser. In Revelations chapter 12 and 10, he's referred to as an accuser of the brethren in the heavenly kingdom. And finally, John 10 and 10 tells us that the enemy comes but to steal, kill, and destroy as Jesus describes the good shepherd and the sheep to the Pharisees. <laughs> Now that you know that he's there and he's orchestrating behind the scenes to keep you away from God's promises and God's word, you must see the spiritual in everything. The enemy will not miss an opportunity to attack you, your growth, and your God-given peace. Never take for granted that it's just a certain person or a certain place that always brings you trouble. When you see the enemy's hand at work, you'll be less likely to war against humans and more likely to lean and depend on God, remembering that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word and the life that it brings. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to allow us to gird up and be strengthened so that we can resist the temptation 
temptation of the enemy so that we can see when his when he is deceiving us against your word and we can know that he is accusing us in your heavenly realm we ask you god to allow us to free ourselves god because we know that your son jesus's blood covers us and we ask you lord to allow us to walk in that salvation and walk in that justification help us father in jesus name we pray and bless every household represented in jesus name we pray amen